Today I want to show you our uh, water catchment system uh, and how we get water out here totally off grid. I also want to show you our pump house and how we built it and how it pressurizes the water up into the house. So we just bought some cheap Home Depot gutters and, and uh, put them up here. And we put a gutter guard on the top of it. Uh, it's not actually the ones that would actually go with this, but... It, it was one that we kind of made compatible to it and it helps keep the leaves out. It doesn't keep everything out, but it helps keep a lot of it out. So we have a gutter on the front of the house and the back of the house. So here's where the two sides of the gutters come together and uh, they come to a, a little pipe here. Um, the pipe, the reason for the pipe here is for when the first part of the rain comes, uh, you want like the stuff that's in there that's kind of, you know, uh, leaves and sediment and things that have just gotten through. Uh, you want them to be able to kind of drop to the bottom here and fill this thing up first. And then once it fills up, it will start running through the pipe and then go into your tank. So it's just the like initial three or four gallons that fills that pipe. And then the rest of it starts flowing in here. So the idea of it is for all that stuff to get to the bottom. So anyways, on the way in here to the tank, I've put a screen in here that I just pull out every so often and clean it. Um, I'll clean that for you here in a little bit and let you see what it looks like because I'm pretty sure it needs a clean and then it's dirty. But that also uh, helps keep uh, some of the sediment out of the tank because uh, probably going to have to end up cleaning the tank about once every two years. So this is a 6,000 gallon water tank and where we actually have the water coming in is at about 4,000 gallons. Uh, because the tank was higher than the house, uh, the gutters could only be so high obviously and they couldn't go into the top of the tank while we would like. So it caused us to lose about 2,000 gallons of capacity in the tank. Now here's the overflow, uh, it's just like a little three quarter inch pipe and when it gets, the tank gets topped off, it comes down and goes to this 500 gallon tank. Now you can't see it but under this dirt pile right here is the actual main pipe that comes out of the tank and goes into the pump house here. Now the reason why I've got it all covered in dirt is because I've already had it freeze and break the pipe. So, uh, and it's, the pipe is above ground, so it's not like I could just run the pipe underground. It's already above ground coming out of the side of the tank. So, with that being said, I just got a lot of dirt and piled the dirt up over the top of the pipe, hoping that the earth keeps it from freezing. And so far, it's, uh, it hasn't froze since I've done it. Now, right here coming out of the shed is, uh, the PEX lines that come out and go down underground to the house. Now, inside this, uh pipe here is not water this is actually uh, the wiring um, it's I did not have any conduit and this I had this stuff laying around so I use this stuff right here basically to cover the wires that go to the pump to me it's like the tank is bigger than the house and uh, that's kind of important to me to have that much water reserve Now the tank was used when I bought it, uh, so I got a good deal on it. I say I actually traded a golf cart for the tank, and uh, when I look these tanks up, they're somewhere around uh, three thousand dollars to buy one. It does work good, being black, and it keeps the the uh, fungus out from growing and things like that. What we do is we pour about four gallons of bleach in it. Uh, twice a year and it shocks the water and it makes sure there's no algae growing or anything like that Now this is a 28 foot house So it's basically 12 foot wide and 28 foot long and uh, The gutters on this thing cost me just under a hundred dollars and uh, I think the gutter guards were like another 50 bucks. So probably got hundred and fifty dollars tied up into the gutters now the reserve tank here, somebody was just throwing it away. Uh, they asked me if I wanted it, and I said, sure. So uh, I got that thing for free, but you can usually bet um, 
you know, it's usually about around a dollar a gallon. So if you were going to buy one of these tanks like this new, um, this one right here would cost you around $500, $599, something like that. Let's open up the pump shed and I'll show you how I get water pressure to the house. Okay, so what we did was me and the wife, we built a cement slab here. Then we built the box and put it around here, built the frame. Built it kind of like a just a lean-to, you know, just so the water runs off the top of it. Uh, it took a couple days to build it, and uh, then I went and got the insulation, and I mean, I really packed the insulation in here because I knew it was going to hold the water tank and the water lines and stuff like that. This is a huge door, and uh, put four heavy-duty hinges on it. Uh, I just wanted to do a single door because I wanted it to be able to seal when I went to shut it. Keep, you know, wasp and rats and things like that out of it the best I can. So Now, it's a little chilly out here today at 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there's always a concern about things freezing in here, uh, especially uh, if I leave and I go away. So what I end up doing is I completely drain the system of water just like you see that's the reason why there's no water in there and there's no filter in it uh, i completely drain this system i pressurize up the air tank here and i come into the the uh, water hose line here and i blow the lines out with air and so i open up the faucets in the house and i blow those completely out from in here i just pressurize everything until all the water comes out and nothing is coming out but air so when i am here and i'm keeping it warm uh, what I do, what I found was this works good here. I've got this little buddy heater here and, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you used it with this buddy heater on all night, uh, you know, it would burn through a tank of that a night. But fortunately I have it so insulated in here that all I have to do is turn the pilot light on. And so if I turn the pilot light on and I close the door I guess because of all the insulation in here, this thing right here will stay at about, now this is when it was, I believe it was 18 degrees outside and it stayed 38 degrees inside here just with the pilot light on. So just a little side note, this pump is running completely off of solar power. Well, here's an overall look at the size of the house versus the size of the water tank. So I wanna show you this other cabin across from me here and the water catchment system on it. This was the first one that I built about six years ago. And uh, it's it's not complicated like this one was. It's uh, fairly uh, easy to do something like this. So let's go check it out. Okay, so this system, like I said, I built about, it's about six years ago and uh, we put some Home Depot gutters up here. This is a 16 by 40 cabin, so it's uh, got a lot more gutters on it here. We've got about 80 foot of gutters. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, the water level is completely topped off in here. And uh, I mean, it's all the way to the top. But So the water runs here, runs down, on this side and goes into a 330 gallon tote um, it's completely topped off and full um, like I said it doesn't take too much it just takes an inch or so of rain to uh, completely fill these up if they were bone dry here are the gutter guards that I've been using on the other house and uh, it's just got that fine mesh screen in it and I think these things are about $2.99 a piece and uh if you get you know 20 of them it's about 60 bucks so we're going to try to put these on this one this one's never had any gutter guards at all so we constantly have to clean it out from the trees and stuff so i think this year we're going to put these gutter guards on it here and see how it does so literally i'm getting these uh water toast 330 gallon water totes uh off of uh facebook market or uh, I've gotten them off of uh, Craigslist years ago and uh, like 75 bucks each sometimes you can find them for 50 each I do see people selling them for 150 and things like that but I wouldn't pay that 
um, you're probably going to end up having just as much money tied up into the valve it, uh, down here on the bottom if you don't get one that has a valve on it that'll work properly for you. So in this system, there's probably about 100 and <clears throat> probably 150 in gutters. Could, could be 180, I think. Maybe we paid for gutters. But like I said, this was five or six years ago, and y'all know the prices have changed on everything at Home Depot. So, uh, and then the tanks, like I said, probably 50 to 75 dollars. I bought them used, and uh, you know if you're gonna do any kind of uh, uh, you know cleaning with this water with your dishes and things like that try to make sure you get one that uh, you know did have a uh, water soluble product in it you know uh, one that let's just make sure it doesn't have something in it like you know like it was carrying oil or something like that that could harm you always be aware of that when you're buying these tanks because the ones that were not food grade and things like that uh, they are cheaper and the ones that are food grade these people are asking top dollar for them on the internet okay well it looks like it's time to get some new flags these things have had it. It doesn't take long. I think they're only about six months old. So in the, the system back here that I just showed you, um, it doesn't have any uh, water lines or, you know, uh, pressurized lines that go into the house. So um, you have to come out here and kind of get your water in a pan and, uh, you know, take it over, heat it up, do your dishes or whatever. That's the way that cabin's set up. But just being able to have water out here unlimited like that is a blessing. It makes it survivable out here. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you don't think that you can survive like this, my old man's been out here for six years now, surviving off uh, solar power and water catchment. And uh, it's very possible. For all those that say it's not possible, it's very possible. All right, I'm going to show you how I turn this water system back on and pressurize up the house. That way I can have water for a shower and everything tonight, do the dishes, all that stuff. Uh, the reason why I shut it off is because it gets too cold when i'm not here i'll be gone like a week and uh i'm not leaving any heat on in the house or any heat out here so i just completely drain the system of the water okay i'm gonna take some vaseline and uh put it around the seal on this filter because if you don't sometimes it leaks First thing I gotta do. <laughs> First thing I gotta do is get it open. Okay, got it loose. Yeah, there's this uh, rubber O-ring that goes around here, and I found that this to be one of the places it really likes to leak. Um, and really, you don't want any any leaks in here you know you want this place to be completely dry and everything working properly so that's what i'm aiming for it's actually the last time I had it on, it was dripping. So, and I, I'm probably going to order some new seals on the line. Uh, tell you what, it feels like it's kind of rough going in there. So, on the threads here on the side, I think I'm going to have Vaseline them up too. That way it just kind of goes a little smoother when you're twisting it. Don't want to put like grease on it or anything, so, like car grease, anyways. Or... So, yeah, that feels a little smoother turning in there. Plastic on the plastic, so 
Okay. So now I'm going to take the filter, put the filter down in it. Okay, so now that we have the filter back on, I'm going to uh, show you here. I'm going to open the water tank. Uh, that way water can flow into there. Um, this one's still open. I never shut it back here. This is the valve coming in from the big 6,000 gallon water tank. Um, what I do need to do is I've got a valve outside. I'm going to go out here and turn it on. And then as soon as I turn it on, it should just start pushing water into it just from the pressure of the big tank. And uh, so it is somewhere right in here. Let's see. There it is. Like I said, I keep this covered up so it doesn't crack when it's too cold. That's the best way I've found to insulate it so far right now. Okay. All right. There's the flow of water. I can hear it going through. Okay. As a matter of fact, just the pressure from that 6,000 gallon tank is kind of filling the lines kind of self primes itself because you've got all that pressure from the tank now when I say all that pressure I mean we're talking you know no more than probably 5 psi but it's enough to prime the lines it's almost filled up and then so once it gets filled up here in the filter it's gonna go on this line here which goes to the house and it'll start basically filling the house with with the uh, water, priming the lines anyways. So while that's being done, let's go in the house and hook up the lines that go to the instant water heater. Because I always to hook those also, because I don't want the, the water heater to freeze. So let's go do that. As you can see, it's already starting to get pressure, because or uh, water through the lines here because it's already dripping so let's get these two lines hooked up it's the in and the out on the instant hot water heater this instant hot water heater is ran off of propane and it works really well it is unlimited hot water off grid and that's uh, another blessing This one on. Okay, we're gonna go to the to the box, turn the water pump on, and then we're gonna walk around uh, outside, inside, everywhere, check for leaks. There's the water pump. There it is. Already pushing water. Okay, we'll turn it to the, the hot and the cold and kind of let it purge the air out. So, let's make sure we're not leaking underneath the water heater here. That looks good. And let's go to the shower. And the shower looks good. It's a little dark in here. We'll try both sides, hot and cold. The way we know it's purged out all of the air. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So that thing's trying to start up. It's got the automatic uh, igniter on it. Water's 45 degrees, uh, just coming in without being heated up. 
so. Okay, let's turn this off. Now let's go outside and check, make sure we don't have any leaks in the actual pump house. And what it's doing is it's filling up this blue tank, which is 45 gallons or 44 gallons. And uh, once it fills that tank up and then it brings the pressure up to the 55 PSI, it, it'll shut off. We don't appear to have any leaks in here at all. Everything looks good. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm happy with that. I saw a drip come down the filter. <laughs> Couple drips. Look here. And that's what I'm talking about, about that filter. So, I'm going to order some new seals for it. And, uh, try a new seal to start with. See how that works. I don't want any drips. So yeah, I paid about uh, $129 for that pump. Uh, got it on Amazon. I got this 44 gallon water tank for free. Uh, somebody was changing up their well system and there was nothing wrong with this thing. It was still good to go. Also, the filter was given to me for free. It was also from another well system where they had bought a new one. And this one right here still worked just fine. So there it is. It's hit the uh, 55 psi, and uh, we're uh, we're rocking and rolling now. We have water pressure all throughout the house. The tank is completely pressurized, and uh, we can go do the dishes and get a nice hot shower. So uh, I appreciate y'all watching. If you would hit the subscribe button and uh, like the video if you liked it.